If we were able to select the most intelligent, imaginative, energetic, and emotionally stable third of mankind, all races would be present. This is a quote by Franz Boas, who has been considered by many to be the father of American anthropology. Franz Boas was born on July 9, 1858 in Minden, Westphalia, Germany. He was a German-American anthropologist and a pioneer of modern anthropology. He received his doctorate in physics and did postdoctoral work in geography. He applied the scientific method to the study of human cultures and societies. Previously, this discipline was based on the formulation of grand theories around anecdotal knowledge. This speculative theorizing is what led Boaz to want to put this discipline on a sound inductive footing rather than a deductive one. In 1883, he began a year-long scientific expedition, his first, to the Baffin Island in northern Canada to study the Inuit of Cumberland Sound. This is where he first implemented participant observation, which is direct field observation which leads to a fuller understanding of sociocultural realities. He was expecting that he would document the close adaptative fit of central Eskimo cultures to their extreme climate. This experience, his experience in the Arctic, however, led him to the contrary conclusion that social traditions, not environmental, exerted a dominant influence over human societies. And from this point forward, he was led to pursue the cultural over the physical dimensions of humanity. Boaz's ethnography of this expedition described in detail every aspect of the Inuit's culture, from dimensions of their kayaks to the size and the use of different harpoon tips. Everything that could be documented was documented. The different materials used and what they were used for. He extensively documented the structure of the family, noting the number of men, women, and children. He also recorded heights and weights of each individual. The entire ethnography of this expedition was later published. Boaz's approach to anthropology was simple. Instead of making generalizations of specific cultures, he collected detailed ethnographic data through field work and participant observation. By collecting data this way, Boaz got a more realistic or emic view of the culture being studied and the information was more accurate. This approach by Boaz was perhaps the most important of his contributions to the discipline of American anthropology and put it on a firm empirical basis. The impact Boaz had on anthropology is perhaps most eloquently demonstrated by the long list of anthropologists he trained. As the first anthropological guru in the United States, Boaz trained virtually the entire first generation of American anthropologists. The list of Boaz's students reads like a who's who in 20th century U.S. cultural anthropology. anthropology. Margaret Mead, Robert Lowy, Alfred Krober, Edward Sapir, Melville J. Herkowitz, Ruth Benedict, Paul Radin, Jules Henry, E. Adamson Holbell, and Ruth Bunzel. In recruiting these students of his, Boaz was very specific and resolute about getting women involved in this discipline. And the reason was simple. He realized that male field workers would have limited access to, or would be excluded from, certain aspects of the cultures being, being studied simply due to gender. He recognized that the discipline needed both male and female ethnographers to get the most holistic view of the culture being described. As a result, today, compared to other academic disciplines, cultural anthropology has been producing more female professionals than males, a legacy that can be traced back to Boaz's practical concerns when the discipline was in its formative period. In fact, according to data provided by the American Anthropological Association, from for every year since 1983, 
women have written more doctoral dissertations in cultural anthropology than men and by 2003 women accounted for 62 percent of all new degrees granted in the discipline. The Mind of Primitive Man was perhaps Boaz's most important book that he wrote. In it he established that culture does not depend on any independent variables. He emphasized that the biological, linguistic, and cultural traits of any group of people are the product of historical developments involving both cultural and non-cultural forces. He established that cultural polarity is a fundamental feature of humankind and that the specific cultural environment structures match individual behavior. He was the first to stress the importance of using and studying all four sub subfields physical anthropology, anthropological linguistics, cultural anthropology, and archaeology to gain a deeper understanding and more holistic view of cultures being studied. From 1892 to 1905, Boaz worked at different museums with curators on organizing and bringing in cultural exhibits. At the Peabody Museum of Archaeology and Ethnography at Harvard University, Boaz arranged for 14 Quaddal Aboriginals from British Columbia to come and reside in a mock Quaddal village where they could perform their daily tasks in context. He also served as assistant curator at the American Museum of Natural History where he attempted to organize exhibits along contextual rather than evolutionary lines. Boaz also found himself on the cover of the May 11, 1936 issue of Time, the weekly news magazine, which makes a statement of its own. Boaz died in New York on December 21, 1942, at the age of 84, but not before he changed the face of anthropology as we know it. He said, we do not discuss the anatomical, physiological, or mental characteristics of man considered as an individual, but we are interested in the diversity of these traits in groups of men found in different geographical areas and in different social classes.